Kuleka, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Maybe let's start with a reminder of what the UIF told you as Scopa on Friday. How deep does this fraud go in the distribution of the funds and how much of this embezzled money has been able to be recovered? Um, thank you very much. Good morning and good morning to the viewers. Well, there are 75 um, suspicious transactions which have been reported and 16 of those cases have been finalized. Um, one is with the South African Police um, Services for investigation. Um, what is clear, though, is that there is um, people who are actually registering false profiles um, on the EU filing um, system. And therefore, if undetected, of course, those people may end up getting uh, money. There are cases where um, some employee, employers rather have, been give, have received overpayments and some have returned the money. Um, whilst that may be commendable, it is clear that some are only now returning that money, which was an overpayment, because of the fact that investigations and auditing is going to take place. The Auditor General is going to be conducting a special audit um, or across four areas um, in so far as the UIF payments is concerned. Mm. Um, and that report is due to Parliament um, in August, but the preliminary report will come out in July. Yeah, Mkuleko, many of these fraud cases are picked up after the fact, which speaks to the institution's internal systems. What commitment? has the UIF made to fix these shortcomings and strengthen their systems? Well, maybe one must hasten to say first that the UIF has dispersed um, 24 billion rands already to um, 4 million employees. Uh, and whilst that is welcomed, we remain fundamentally concerned that almost a million workers or employees have been unable to um, receive their monies because of administrative processes which are incomplete, including but not limited to the fact that the verification process of the employer-employee relationship has not been um, actually concluded. Um, secondly, on the question specifically is to say the issue of the UIF IT systems has been with us for quite some time now. Even the Fifth Parliament dealt with it. And so the directive of the committee on Friday was very clear um, that the um, department and the UIF itself will have to now submit a comprehensive uh, migration plan to a better system, of course, which one that will be effective and efficient. And that commitment is there. Work is already um, underway. The UIF did indicate that they were overwhelmed, of course, by the fact that they had to now dispense um, you know, COVID-19 related um, costs as opposed to their normal day-to-day -day, um, operations. Be that as it may, um, we fundamentally believe that at the heart of protecting um, the UIF and the funds of workers is to ensure that the system um, is protected because it is open to abuse. And But at the same time, um, some of the profiles which have been reported um, did not have any funds transmitted to them. But the mere fact that um, the criminals out there have got one foot in the door should actually push the UIF um, its resolve to actually fixing this matter as a matter of urgency. And when you look at some of these fraudulent cases, you can't help but wonder if the criminals have had the assistance of those inside the institution. Has the URF looked internally as well, and, and what are they finding? <clears throat> No, they haven't. It was one of the issues we have raised with them insofar as consequence management is concerned um, and the fact that um, they are simply asking the employees because the information required for the creation of a profile by and large resides um, with the empl employ employers. But the UIF then simply leaves it up to the technological system um, to do the vetting process amongst other things. So what is important here is is that the Auditor General um, has actually, um, as I was indicating, will be instituting a special audit because the issues of concern and corruption which we are discussing now so far the UIF is concerned are not confined to the UIF only. Yeah. They are across the spectrum and so the, the Auditor General has 
set up now mechanisms for special audits for COVID-19 related expenditure and procurement, but specifically to the um, UIF, the three areas will be the control environment, um, wherein the manual systems of, of submission and the forms and so on will actually be uh, uh, juxtaposed against the IT system to ensure that the checks and balances are there. Secondly, will be a special audit around the payments that have already been made um, by the UIF and to track um, the payments genesis uh, 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 right up to its conclusion to make sure that due process has been followed. And the third er area that the AG will be uh, um, uh, auditing is on all the tenders that have gone out because it did emerge in the meeting that one of the tenders was um, changed in terms of specification midstream. And so it's important, therefore, that the collective integrity um, of the and tenders and that the UIF has actually rolled out and investigated. The one area that we have added the scope to the AG's uh, a, a special audit is around consequence management yeah. because it's no use that all these um, things are reported and found but there is no process which is instituted either by the UIF or the department to actually hold people accountable and that is of course will be a response to the question um, that, that you pose. So we have decided as a committee that it is no use to duplicate resources and investigate matters which mm -hmm. the AG um, is already investigating because in terms of our own work, the basis of Scopa's work is the AG reports and therefore we welcome the fact that the work of special audits is now underway and when that report comes through um, in August, we'll have sight of it and deal with it. Finally, we will be going to the UIF um, as a committee ourselves as a part of an oversight visit to ensure that we satisfy ourselves that what is reported on paper and in the reports that we have is actually what is transpiring um, in the UIF um, offices. We are yet to determine, of course, which of those offices will be visiting of the UIF so that um, we, we, we finalize the processes of oversight physically as part of our boots on the ground um, operation. All right, Mkuleko Shenga, thank you so much for your time on ENCA this Sunday morning.